<clears throat> Hello everyone. So I heard that it's quite easy to be the last presenter because you are already staring at your at the time. But at the moment that I have a different feeling. So today I would like to talk about a bit about uh, how we manage ourselves in a so-called flat organization. So this will be also kind of a story as the previous presentation, but with a lot of ups and downs and on a bit higher, uh, slow, lower scale. So about myself, my name is Gabor, I work as a UX designer, <clears throat> and at the moment I am responsible for the biological and chemical drawing tools at the company. And you may be wondering that why would a simple UX designer talk about uh, a design leadership? Where is our design lead at the moment? Well, the case is that uh, our team doesn't have any or doesn't have such role. So we basically define leadership in a bit different way, but in an our company as well, in the whole company as well. So a few things about the company just to understand the context. So uh, we, we are working for uh, large pharmaceutical companies, uh, basically shipping, designing and developing uh, drug dis uh, like tools for drug discovery. Uh, we have a quite wide, broad and um, uh, diverse uh, product portfolio. And uh, we, are, we, have, uh, three we are working in three different countries, in Budapest, in, the, in Prague and uh, in, uh, in the US. So as I said, we define ourselves as a flat, or flat organization, which means that we don't have traditional hierarchy. But on the other hand, we have different roles with different uh, responsibilities. So we think that uh, this kind of flexible structure can help us to solve uh, flex, uh, uh, complex problems in a better way. The UX team, if we focus a bit on the UX team, um, so we are, we are operating on a horizontal level as well, where we don't have POs, the leaders, or head-offs, but we have Zoltan, who is our <laughs> nice agile scrum master, or nice agile coach scrum, slash scrum master, and his responsibility is to, to put ourselves together somehow. Okay, so a bit about uh, the few facts about the, the culture. Uh, we, I mean, the change is, is really in the core of our, our culture. So some we, we, we allowed and sometimes we, uh, we had to experiment a lot and change many things. So I changed my presentation four hours ago. And, uh, and on top of it, we have a really strong uh, feedback culture because it's quite important to keep together this flexible uh, structure. We have a lot of trainings and uh, usual feedback sessions during our work. And uh, I wanted to mention the role of uh, Agile coaches and Scrum Masters because how I see them, they are basically the facilitator of the whole uh, culture. So it's a bit different than in uh, traditional Agile companies. But on the other end, we have uh, many big challenges, but I just want to uh, show you two of them. So since we have really autonomous product teams who are responsible for, for their products, it's quite hard to, uh, to manage those higher level, company level uh, issues because they are focusing on, on their own decisions. And this is the, the same thing happens with prioritization. So there is, at the moment, there is no layer who can decide which product has more priority than, than the other. So now let's focus on our story as a UX team. <clears throat> this, these are the stages of, uh, of our story, and I marked where we are at the moment. And I, now I don't want to go into details, but I, I want to tell you this, each steps uh, uh, during the presentation. So to visualize somehow different states, I uh, wanted to use a, a design maturity model. Uh, I prefer this, this one, the spider web graph, bec uh, instead of the, the, the stages, because usually the stages between, the border between the stages are not that clear most of the time. So for me, it makes more sense to, to uh, have a chart like this. And you can easily spot the gaps that you have to focus on. And in our case, as I said, we have a lot of different products. Uh, we had to map out each of them. So that's why it makes more sense for us. But I have to mention that this is not a scientific report. So this will be only for a visualization purpose to, to show you how we, where we focused at the moment. So this was the, the starting point of the story, basically. So uh, we had a few designers who worked uh, separately or isolated at the company. They mainly focused on UI design related stuff. And they created some kind of business value just because the look and feel was a bit better than before, <laughs> than how it designed by developers. 
And that was the point when a few enthusiastic UX designers joined the company uh, during the first flood of the, of the uh, hiring process. And we, we started to focus on first on the education and the communication part, which meant that we basically uh, had a lot of presentation. We organized a lot of ev events where we wanted to share the value of design and how we can help to, to, uh, to make more valuable products at the end and obviously to have more revenue. And uh, for instance, we, we had a, a so-called ambassador movement where we collected all those guys who were interested about design and we wanted to educate them how they can use our methods in their daily work. So we had testers, uh, scrum masters, developers, POs, business analysts there. And uh, this was the first time when we, we started to act like a team. So we also wanted to define our values and uh, the basic vision that we want to reach uh, throughout as a UX team. So the, the maturity model ended up like this. And as you may see that we focused on too many things. So it was still a really small team and uh, we wanted to do so, so many things at once. And the other important thing about our decision making. So at this point, we, we, we always wanted to have consensus. So each of us has to agree with all the decision and it made quite slow everything. But at that point, you know, we were like a quite enthusiastic team, so it was the, the best setup for us. And then comes the failure, or the crisis. <clears throat> so the first down. Uh, so yeah, actually, we, we created a lot of false expectation towards our stakeholders, because we said we wanted to change everything, and they believed us. So we were quite, <laughs> we were quite good in that. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, but we couldn't ship that. So we, at the end, we had a lot of uh, half-ready uh, tasks, and uh, so basically nothing happened at the end. So we talked a lot, but then nothing happened. So, but we were quite uh, enthusiastic still that we wanted to change this, and that's why we, we, when we first created. Uh, our first design agency, the internal design, design agency. So at this point, we decided that we focus only the most important things. So we, we will work in project-based, basically. So the products can ask us a request uh, UX need, and then we go there for a few months, but we are still part of a horizontal team. And uh, on the other hand, we had a few horizontal-related uh, events, which can help us to align ourselves. So there was some kind of, if you see the, 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 the maturity profile, let's say, we did a few um, align-related uh, 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 stuff, but, but still, but not enough. And mainly we were focusing on UI design, obviously, at that point. Uh, yes. And then comes the next crisis, because, you know, it looks quite okay, but, uh, but just close your eyes and imagine one day when you start in the morning, uh, in the morning designing a, a selection tool for large molecules such as peptides. Then you have to switch and uh, let's, let's say ideate about uh, uh, R group definition icon for a different uh, drawing tool. And then during the lunch you discuss uh, with your fellow designers what should be the colors for the design system. And then you, at the end, you, have an idea, you run an ideation session with developers uh, on how to solve a different problem. So it was like quite overwhelming and the context which was really hard because the, 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 the domain is really complex. So you have to basically learn everything. Because I said that the, the product portfolio is quite diverse. So from biology to chemistry, it's not that easy. Uh, and we also have, yeah, we also had prioritization problems because I said, that uh, there were nobody who tell you that which is which project is more uh, which has more priority than the other one. So imagine that all the POs wanted to somehow uh, tell you that their product is the most important part. And obviously, especially for me, it was quite hard to say no. So so at the end, yeah, we were overwhelmed. But. Then we decided, okay, it was it was a great uh, challenge. But now let's create our first uh, distributed distributed model, which means that we sit next to, I mean, we sit with the, the developer team. So no more agency. And we created our first beautiful scalable structure, internal structure. So you can see that we 
we called it slices. So it's a slice system. And uh, we put uh, the products into different slices, which we think that uh, related to each other. And each of the slices had one uh, owner. So, but as you may see, that there are a lot of gaps still at this point. And the end, we had a great idea that let's put the design system in the middle. So it can be like the perfect agile design system because we can channel all the knowledge from, from the product side into the design system, the centralized design system. And it's just, I don't know, somehow it's grow from nothing. And then uh, just to, to, to make sure or take care about the, the alignment as well, we had those pair designers. So then you can have uh, design critics and some kind of alignment uh, uh, events together somehow. So it looked like, okay, this is quite cool. We can solve all the problems that we have. We just have to fill the gaps. And at that point, our uh, maturity model looks something like this. So uh, we, we, uh, we started to use the strong ownership as a decision maker, which meant that uh, we, we separated the horizontal related uh, tasks into parts, like let's say defining design principles for the design system. And each of them had an owner at the end. And the owner had to make sure to collect all the feedbacks from the, the related stakeholders and then make a decision at the end uh, for the, uh, during the deadline. Obviously, <laughs> it doesn't work. So you can imagine if you have to make a decision to work on a, a long-term plan, which is a design system, which can help on the long term the, the company, which is more like a dream at that point. Or you have to feed a developer team every day, six developer with you know, uh, prototypes and mockups that they want to implement. So we always made the decision to choose the last one or the later one. And, uh, and yeah, and on the other hand, we had the issue, what, it, it's really similar to what Chongor mentioned as a user journey based uh, uh, grouping, that we had the, the issue that, that um, some of the product owners asked us that how, how, do you want to, uh, how do you want to handle these solutions, which are basically more products uh, put together in one workflow. So if you are focusing, if you are part in one product, then it was quite hard to, to understand the big picture. So we needed a different layer on top of, of the product layer to tackle this problem. And then when we focused the, a bit on the design operation itself. So the first, the first uh, I think, achievement was that the design system became a product with an owner. So there was one guy who, who took care of all those uh, uh, issues that you have to when you deal with design system. And thanks to the second great flood of, uh, of hiring, we filled up many of the gaps. So it was much easier to, to work on the products. And we, we started to, to work on process, uh, product level processes. So we, we used, I don't know, some of the teams started to use discovery tracks, for instance, where we could use uh, our design tools, like uh, the design tools to find out what to build exactly, because before that it was only about development. So you didn't have too, too much time to find out, to define the concept or to define the big picture. You always have to, had to like ship the, the mockups that they want to develop. So finally, we started to use, the, the, use these uh, design um, or, or wanted to put somehow uh, design into the agile process. And, and the developers started to ask for ideation sessions be, and for mockups and low fidelity prototypes, be, uh, prototypes before they could even um, estimate the, the, the amount of work, which was quite good. And finally, or lucky, or finally, we had our first uh, um, um, version of the design system. So we could show something that, okay, this is, this is how we define, or this is how we imagine the, the future of Chemox on design. And at that point, so we are here at the moment. <clears throat> at this point, we have all those, try to uh, uh, cover all those parts. So we are still have to focus a bit, I mean, much on the UI design part because we want to build a design system. So at this point, it's quite important to do that. And uh, as, a, as you may see, the design operation become also uh, an important part. So to somehow create processes that that can use in, in the whole company. But obviously we have challenges still. So this is still not the, the finish line where because the scalability, for instance. So uh, you can imagine nine UXers sitting in one room during the UXers day, 
when, and they have to decide about multiple selection drop downs, for instance. <laughs> so it, it doesn't work. Everybody has a different opinion, and obviously it's, it's not effective enough. And, uh, and obviously, when we defined our first vision, it was like a really small team, and we had a really different design maturity within the company, so we have to revise them as well. And the other uh, negative part, what happened uh, when we introduced this, uh, this distributed model, that the new colleagues are start their job right joining the, the product team. So the whole team cohesion is a bit different than before. So we realized it during the feedback sessions, the last feedback session, when we had no idea how to give a feedback because we've never worked together before. So we said maybe we should revise it a bit. <clears throat> and then the future, a few things about the future. <clears throat> so obviously we would like to improve our model. So we would like to somehow merge together and it's called the hub and spoke model. So merge together a centralized team and those teams who are uh, integrated right into the, into the product teams. And uh, this interesting thing is sociocracy, which is uh, sociocracy 3.0, which, uh, which is a framework that uh, now we are experimenting with. with. And it's, it's really uh, great. Uh, it, it offers you great processes for those companies who, who work in this flat organization model. And obviously, we have to unify those processes. So now we have the product level processes, but we have to bring it up to, uh, to a different level. And, uh, and we didn't focus before on this personal growth and team fit uh, uh, in, the, in the UX team. So first, we, we focused to have a perfect UX team, uh, um, team fit for the UX team, the horizontal team. But now, since we are also part of the product teams, it's a bit different question. And we still don't know how to, how to handle this problem. And obviously, if you want to sit at the, or if you want to be part of the strategy of the company, we have to... Uh, deliver some kind of metrics to, to make it more tangible. And we are not there yet. And just one more thing about, this is, this is from sociocracy, uh, we, because I think it's like a really great example, how can it help us to, so it's nothing special, but how can it help us to, to solve like one given problem? So at the company, we had a lot of requests to uh, uh, handle uh, presentations, a sales pitch, new colors for I don't know what, and you know, all the time we have to say that we are UX designers. So the visual design is a different part of, of the story because they just think that we are designers. So why not? We should do it. And so this UX domain, uh, the, I mean, the, the definition of domain can help us because this is basically provides a template which you can fill out. So you can show it to the others as well. This is UX design at the company and this is visual design. So please don't mix it together. And in the UX uh, domain, you have basically people around them, 10 people, this is us. And uh, we have subdomains. Subdomains are basically those small parts, the, the horizontal uh, issues that we are grouping together. So this can solve the scalability problem. So those designers don't have to sit together anymore because there are these small subdomains and they have to focus on like hiring, let's say. This is the hiring. Um, uh, subdomain and they have to focus on hiring and there is a process as well that uh, that can help you how to how to uh, I don't know come up with a problem or if you have a problem and how to solve it within this subdomain so it looks quite promising and for me this was the basically the key takeaway so we also have some kind of leadership no we have leadership but we basically distribute it uh, beside the whole team and there are these different groups who are uh, responsible for that and we have a book, by the way, about our experience, but I'm just joking. And so, but we are also, <laughs> because every presenter should have a book, which is just recently published. But we are also growing our slices, so we are also looking for new designers and fellow researchers. Thank you. Designer feel comfortable to work in. You mean, but I, what I said that in yeah, our case, we don't. Yeah. 
That's why it's a good question for you because you're not a leader, but you're part of a team yeah, who exactly. has no leader but has a leader. Or, uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. I think in our case, question, also what should, I, what should I ask from a leader uh, to make a, I don't know, a great team at the end, right? Or something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, but I think in our case, this is the responsibility of our coach, our agile coach. So basically he's the one, he's standing there. <laughs> so Zoltan, Zoltan who I mentioned. So he's the, he's the one who somehow coaches and facilitates the whole process. So he is responsible when, you know, when they introduce sociocracy for the company, they are the scrum masters and agile coach are the one who make sure that this goes down to the teams as well. And uh, to define those processes which helps us to, to be a better team. And on the other hand, I think the personal growth were the, was the other part, if there is a process in the company. So yeah, so basically I think since we don't have leaders, we need processes. So which can, you know, which can help you to define what you should do when you, you need some kind of help. And this personal growth uh, model can help us as well to define that, okay, now I want to focus on this part of the design. Um, so I want to be a better dis prototype designer or something like that. And then you can track it with your, usually with your scrum master or agile coach. I, I, does it make sense or? Yes. Okay. <laughs> a quick question that uh, uh, the cycles of design don't necessarily match the, the cycles of agile sure. development. So how do you handle this? Yeah, yeah sure, sure. Yeah, that's, that can be a different uh, presentation, I guess. Okay, okay. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we, I think nowadays we use this Lean UX method, so this dual track agile. And uh, we see it works. So now, now with my team, with, uh, with the chemical drawer team, we have basically, if you see it from the gyro board, we have a business board where you define the business values and the hypotheses. And then you have a discovery board where you try to find out if it makes sense or not. And then you have a development track. And then, so you have time. So obviously when I joined the team, I had to do a lot of mockups for that to just for them to, to, uh, to define or you mean to develop it. But now I have more time to focus on the development track. And the development track, I mean, not the, sorry, the discovery track. And this is also the responsibility of the development team as well. So it can happen easily that, okay, there is a risky element on the board. And then I need some prototype for some coders as well to create prototypes. And then they work on that cycle. So in, in this case, you know, it's somehow merged together. So this is how we, we are in the first, like we are still experimenting with that, but it, it looks like it will work for us. So we are doing it parallel, basically. One more question. Uh, it will be somewhat dummy question, but I will ask it anyway. Uh, how do you feel, is, it, is this flat approach more beneficial compared to a traditional company structure? And if yes, then what does it since, since it's recorded, I have to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> But, but I think, yeah, I believe in, I still believe in that. And what I said at the beginning that our com we think that we can tackle those really complex problems in a better way in a flexible environment. And I think that's, that's the case. And that's what our CEO tend to say. That, uh, yeah, sometimes we are slower, sometimes decision making is not that obvious, but, but still you, you have the freedom to, to change anything. And basically that's, that's why we are still doing that. So when, just one example, when we wanted to have a design uh, jam at the company, so why not? And uh, we wanted to merge it together with Hackathon to, to have some new ideas. And then we could do it in two weeks. So without any, I don't know, decision that you needed. So if you do it, you gather a few people and then you can do it. If not, if nobody joins you, then you, you don't do it. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you, Gabler. Sorry. Oh, we can take it.